Welcome everyone to the Inti Hub uh, 10X webinar. My name is Nafel Chahyadi. I am the CEO and founder of Inti Hub, and I will be your webinar host today. Yeah, without further ado, we haven't, uh, you know, I could talk about this topic for days on end because it's, it is deep, it's a deep topic, but I, like Novel said, I'm gonna scrape the surface with things that you can try to understand and even post this talk, take the things that I've told you and research it for yourself. This really is for you to start exploring the space of your own consciousness so that we can collectively create businesses and communities that are worth living in. So, Novel, if you could share the two questions in the poll so that I can get a sense of the feel of this group. So we've prepared two questions to start off this session with. So the question really is about how you're feeling today. And I want to see the sense in this group. And if you're happy, exactly, please do not, don't do that because so many times we ask people how they are and they say, I'm fine when they're really burning inside and they want to break something. So, you know, be true and honest because that's, that's part of being more conscious about yourself. Okay, so I can see over here, grateful, curious, stress. So grateful and curious, perfect. And that's, that's a great place to be. I'm, I'm excited uh, to know that you're there, yes. The second question, what do you believe about your life? The first answer is, I believe I create my reality and well-being, or lack of well-being, so where I am today, I'm responsible for it. The second thing is, I believe I'm unlucky. Most of the time, I feel like I have to work harder than everyone else. And the third is, I believe life is what it is. It's random, it happens to me, and I just deal with it as it comes. People in this group do believe that they can create their own reality. That's majority, that's excellent. Okay, and, and the third group is, I believe life is random. But keep this question in your mind because you should re-ask yourself this question by the end of the talk. All right, so without further ado, this topic is something I'm very passionate about. I come from a background of a very um, busy lifestyle. I used to wake up at 4.30 in the morning and finish my days at 12.30 at, you know, the next day. So um, I thought that being extremely productive with my time was the only way to manage myself. And it was really not until I had my first panic attack that I discovered that there was more to this and I needed to figure out, and that's what really triggered me, to start to ask the deeper questions, and it has been an amazing journey. Um, consciousness is a word that has been tried and tested by the scientific community. They've been trying to place theories around it for the longest time. Is consciousness something that resides within us? Is it external to us? Is it something we tap into? And what, what is the meaning of it? So the, the place I want to start here is we are in a time in this, on this planet where there's so much happening. There is duality going on. There's wars. There's people trying to live in peace. There's this hype of wanting to save the world. And this is what I want to deliver today, that if you want to put any good out there in the world, you're going to have to start thinking of the collective as yourself first. What do I mean? Within your body, you actually comprise of approximately 37 trillion cells. Trillion cells. Meaning that if you were to think of all the cells in your body, they're working like, they're working like the world, the globe is working, right? Like different organs functioning to do different things so that you can stay alive and so that you can be productive, you can create, you can be at peace. So within ourselves as a collective, within our brains, that's around 100 billion cells in your brain alone. That, that's crazy when you think about it. And so before we start to think about what we can do for the world, are we 
really curious about what we're doing for ourselves, about what's going on within us. You have people who are depressed and sad and angry and bitter. They're running a race in life and they're not actually all, always satisfied. They're trying to save the world when they are not happy within. They're trying to save the world when their homes are not at peace. Coming from leadership backgrounds, you know, if someone has a fully successful career and they're really killing it, they're, they're having troubles in another area of your life or their health is giving way. So how do, you, how do you become more conscious about the different aspects of your life so you can create a more wholesome life is the question. Now, there's an author I love, and I'm sure many of you know him. He's Carl Sagan. He was an astronomer and a philosopher. And this picture is actually a picture from NASA. And I wanted, the way I want to do this talk is I want us to zoom out and then zoom back in. You see this little dot over here? This is planet Earth. This was a shot, this was a shot taken Yes, it's tiny. And you know, he had something so profound to say in his book, The Pale Blue Dot, which is what he called it, that Earth is suspended in a speck of a sunbeam. This is for us to really contemplate when we look at this, but how small our planet is within a multiverse that exists beyond us, but we are all comprising of the same stuff. We all come from something that's greater than us. And I want to read this, this quote from the book. And this is a great place to start the presentation at. The Earth is a very small stage in a vast cosmic arena. Think of the rivers of blood spilled by those generals and emperors so that in glory and triumph, they could become the momentary masters of a fraction of a dot. It has been said that astronomy is a humbling and character-building experience. There is perhaps no better demonstration of the folly of human conceits than this distant image of our tiny world. To me, it underscores our responsibility to deal more kindly with one another and to preserve and cherish the pale blue dot, the only home we'll ever know. This gives us perspective on consciousness. It gives, when, when, when you're out in, you know, as astronomers, when you're out in space, you start to look at things from an outside perspective. Now, as a human being, have you ever stepped out of a scenario that's played in your life and looked at it as an observer, like an astronomer? Have you ever stepped out of an uh, argument that you're having? Or if you're running a business and there's friction, which now a lot of there's so much going on. There are leaders having to make very difficult decisions. Have you extracted yourself from these difficult situations so that you can look at it almost like you're an astronomer and give it a v look at it as though you're a character playing in a plot? This exercise of being the observer of your life can help you make so much better decisions. Just the thought of being an observer. I mean, my background was in the space where I used to see this all over the place. I used to talk about AI and I used to talk about AI supremacy. And I realized, I realized that, my goodness, we don't even know our own human potential. That's when everything switched. When I said, we are putting so much energy in creating the, more, the most amazing super computers that are highly intelligent, and there's nothing wrong in technology. No, it can work hand in hand, right? But do we know ourselves and what our potential is? This, is? this is what has blown my mind. I think the main thing around that, and this is what I want to touch on in purpose, is peace, finding peace in what you're doing. It's not about the race. We have been completely shifted into the mindset of competition and survival rather than thriving in abundance. And this is where everything changes. There is a shift on the planet. We know this, we can feel it. We've been in lockdown. We've been cut off from you know, normal activities of our life. And we've had to deal with various um, adjustments. 
Um, not everyone has dealt with these things on an emotional level. They've just had to run with it, especially if you've had kids and you've had to deal with homeschooling. And, you know, I've seen, I've seen people within my own circle shift tremendously during this time internally, but not everyone is necessarily going and moving through their emotions and trying to figure out what am I supposed to learn from this situation. So what I believe the lockdown has done for humanity has amplified whatever it is we're feeling. It has literally amplified every single decision we have made in the moment now because we are within our walls and we have had a situation where we're not running away from our homes, we're not escaping into the gym for productivity, we're trying to bring it into our living room, but we're, we've been in this mindset that we need to keep doing something and that doing things is the way to be. We've forgotten how to just be. You know, how do you just be and enjoy peace and fulfillment with what you have? And that's why I was so happy to see gratitude come up in what people said today because that's one of the key things. And so there is, um, I don't know who on this call has read Eckhart Tolle's book, A New Earth. He's an author of many great books. But I want to read this quote because I think it is uh, very profound. The greatest achievement of humanity is not its works of art, science, or technology, but the recognition of its own dysfunction, its own madness. To recognize one's own insanity is, of course, the arising of sanity, the beginning of healing and transcendence. A new dimension of consciousness had begun to emerge on the planet, a first tentative flowering. Those rare individuals then spoke to their contemporaries, they then pointed to the possibility of awakening from the collective nightmare of normal human existence. Now, there's someone I highly admire. Um, he's doing great work in the space of consciousness and human potential and healing and allowing people to really liberate themselves from things they don't necessarily deal with. The author's name um, and speaker, and he, he's, a, you know, a chiropractor. He's actually healed himself, but I won't go into um, details of him. His name is Dr. Joe Dispenza, and what he says in the way he describes consciousness, which I love, is that consciousness is not just a byproduct of the brain. You see, if you think right now that you have a thought, you have a thought that's going on now, and you can actually change your thoughts. So, for example, Right now, you are paying attention to me and you're listening, but if you want, you could just disconnect and go do something else. The power for you to actually do that means that there is this thought. Where is the thought coming from? It is coming from what was initially thought is the mind. Now, the mind is in your brain. The mind is your brain in action. But where is the thought coming from? And so this is what has fascinated me, and I'm going to share a little bit of the science behind that. You see, there are three ways of looking at this world in, in collectives. You have you as a collective of cells, you have people, you know, they're um, organisms of people, really, you know, communities, there are nations, they're, and then the entire planet. And the planet obviously consists of the soil and the trees and nature and everything that the world is trying to save now. Um, and lockdown has actually healed in a lot of uh, parts of the world. When you think about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and I'm sure everyone on this call has seen it, um, you, we know that the baseline, so people who are struggling, people who don't have enough income, who are living poorer lives, they can also be happy, but if they don't have enough money, that they're going to be trying to survive. And as you go up that ladder, you get into better positions, you build a life where you're financially free, you reach what is called self-actualization. Now, what fascinated me was when I mapped this on the human being, right? The human being, th so this is a ph philosophy of, of structure in the way we go and the way we grow within the world. If you look at the human body, you have your baseline needs, you know, which is your reproduction, and you have your eating, which is to sustain yourself, your food, your nourishment, which is all in the, in the stomach. You have your heart, which is all to do with love 
And this is the third part of the Maslow's hierarchy, which is, you know, we then seek belonging groups. I mean, the reason why you're here is because you know Novel. You, you know, or you know me, one or the other, and you believe in the things he talks about, and you are interested and in, engaged with this kind of conversation. So there's a sense of belonging, just being in this group. Then you move up, and the minute you can actually share something, and this goes to purpose, then you begin to share it. You move through your throat. You begin to talk you, at work. You, you're sharing. You're creating. You're speaking about your creations. And that's when you reach the brain. And they say the three levels up of the human body map exactly the three levels of Maslow. So now what we're trying to do is we're trying to help more people to get up, right? So we want less of the uh, poverty. We want more prosperity. But the question I want to ask you is, have we really experienced, do we really understand what self-actualization is for ourselves and within our human body? It took, a, it took a lockdown to get humans to really start addressing difficult questions. And I want to talk a little bit about what has happened, especially in the world of technology and business and production, the production economy, as I like to call it, the productivity economy. You've had revolution after one industrial revolution to the next, to the next, to the next. And what have we been doing better over the years? We've gotten better at efficiency, automating things through AI. It's all about how can I make this simpler, right? How can I make my life easier? It's, it's been about productivity. And with that productivity, humans working with exponential technologies have also entered, and Novel and me were talking about this before I started the presentation, states of more um, hypertension because they're trying to keep up with the very technology that they're creating. Isn't that ironic? And you go into what is the fifth industrial revolution cusp, which is where we are at. AI and building AI into all our technologies, which is great because it's going to help us from a lot of, you know, save us time. But the question I want to ask here is what is missing? We are, we are trying to reach what is called technological singularity, which is where there is a super consciousness, as they say, for technology. So a computer that can really do everything for us. And then what are we going to do? Do we, do we know our potential? Have we explored our potential the way we're exploring artificial intelligence? Are we doing it side by side? Is there enough knowledge in the space of human consciousness? I think not. And so how do we liberate ourselves is the question. We're talking about trying to find the support from the machines we're creating to save ourselves from mundane tasks. But have we even figured out ourselves? And so over the, the, the decades, over the industrial revolutions, the things we've done better are intelligence. We've been able to acquire more knowledge and share more knowledge. Thanks to technology, we're here on this call. Decisiveness. We've been teaching leadership on how to be better decision makers. And technology has enabled automation. What has been happening in organizations is a lot of talk about emotional intelligence, right? It's, there's a lot of talk about caretakers. There's a lot of, lot of talk about, well, what is happening to our teams and businesses and startups and why are people burning out? And there are certain things that are mapped to what was just shared on the slides before. We have not had enough love integrated within our teams. Love is often seen as a fluffy word, but love drives the force of the world. It actually is what drives passion to create some of the best things that mankind has ever created have come from a source of love. Love is linked to emotional intelligence, caring. The more emotionally intelligent you are, the more you understand the people you're working with, the more you understand the people you're creating for if you're an artist. Truth, are you really doing the work that you are happy doing? I ask this because I've gone on that journey. I realized that I was an artist at heart and I had not filled my, my longing to be an artist fully. I am an inspirer and a connector and I have business acumen and I enjoy it. I enjoy the space of startups, but I had not discovered the creativity fully. So the questions you need to ask yourself are truthful questions and it requires a lot of courage and this links to purpose and wisdom. Are we are we thinking of the things that we're creating 
by looking at things that have been taught even by our grandparents. You know? You know when you sit with people in your family over a meal and you have someone who's elderly and they tell they tell you something and you're like, "Oh, you don't understand. You don't understand this new this new age." And they say things that are so profound, you know? They say well, things like and They say things go back to your uh, grandparents even for our with our kids as well. Yes, <laughs> it's <laughs> You know, because it's ancient wisdom that we are actually letting go of, and it has it it can save us a lot of effort in regard to the things that we're building that we don't need to rebuild. There are certain truths that existed from before Absolutely. Absolutely. that we can just repurpose. So these are things that are coming back into leadership, mm -hmm. and they're coming back very strong, especially in. The West now, there's a lot of talk about this, but then even rooted in my own culture, India, that's where I'm from. And bringing, bringing um, these kind of mindsets back will save us from d dispensing our energy in a place that's not needed. So we have Sundar Pichai, the CEO of Google, who has, as you know, I'm sure most of you, if, if you're in the space of technology, know that you know, there was an announcement last it's been a while now but about quantum computing and that this is the first quantum computer now what what i want to the point of the slide is to say well we are reaching such feats in technology do we understand ourselves in regard to how how much potential we have we are much more powerful and much more we are magnificent beings we have much more power and potential than this quantum comp computer because we can create it so the point being is we have not tapped into that and this is where i want to start sharing the science behind that so we've been on this quest for super intelligence you know and man and machine um, but what is human intelligence really so it's the ability to acquire knowledge and skills this is intelligence right this is why you're on this call but think about this, if we're just feeding off each other and our past experiences, will we be replicating the future? Are we going to create really things that are new or are we repurposing ideas from the old? What are we, what, what are we actually doing? What is intelligence? What is the word intelligence really? The question I want to ask is where do we create something new from? If we really want to change the world for the better and ourselves, we want to understand ourselves enough to create from truth. Where do we create something new from? The world is not short of bold ideas. You know how someone comes and says, I have a great idea. And I think, yes, you do. You're, that's amazing. It came to you. But there are also other people who have bold ideas. Do you know why these bold ideas have not come to life? It's because the world is short of bold ideas being brought to life by leaders living in their truth. Why do you want to create something? Why do you want, when you have this bold idea, what is the reason you really want to bring it to life? Is it that you want to prove that you can have a multi-billion dollar business and be the next Jeff Bezos? <laughs> or is it because you truly feel like this business is going to transform lives? What's the reason? And so, you know, we look at things that are going on now, and there's this battle between the U.S. and China in regard to AI. There's so much content on this, and people are trying to create the best startup initiatives around, you know, AI technology and deep learning, all of this, this cool stuff. And then I look at someone like Vandana Shiva, if any of you have heard of her, and she talks about the nature's economy and the current, that currency, it should not be money but it should be life. So how are we looking at the businesses we want to bring to life for a new world if we're purely fixated on ego and on power from the perspective of the unhealthy ego and profit? There is the healthy ego that comes from the place of truth. If you are living your purpose and you have a statement that you're driven by, you will create from a place that is going to ultimately affect humanity positively. And so she started, this woman was one of the first people on the boards of quantum computing. She's a quantum physicist, 
amazing woman. If you can look up her talks, do look them up. But she talks about food and how if people could learn like the wise ones once did of how to grow their own food, would we really need all that power? And she asked the very profound questions that people don't want to bring mainstream because there's a lot of big corporations that own patents for food and production of food. So these are questions that I want to throw out to the world and things I want you to, to take with you. What does it mean to have a bold idea? And is it resonating with your truth? And is it really going to help the planet and humanity? You see, there's a lack of consciousness. There's a detachment from the human spirit. And the, the way it has worked is that the rational mind, even though it has been seen to be the most important thing to live in our brain, it has dumbed down the spirit. And that means a lack of imagination. And what is imagination? Imagination is the faculty or action of forming new ideas or images or concepts of external objects that are not present to the senses. So, you know, when you imagine, you close your eyes and you think, oh, what is this great world going to look like? Or what is that amazing piece of art I'm going to create? Or what is my vision for my business? You imagine it. This is how some of the great, great inventions have come to play. It's through imagination. And so Einstein said imagination is more important than knowledge. We cannot solve our problems from the same level of thinking that we created them. So how do we tap into imagination? We have to create from a higher level of consciousness. What is consciousness? To simplify it, it is your awareness. It is your awareness of what is in this world. It is your awareness of your own truth, your own calling, your own purpose in life. It is awareness. Why does it matter? If any of you have watched these movies, watch them. So Lucy was all about, <laughs> it's, it's very sci-fi, but uh, it will give you an understanding of what it means to tap into higher levels of consciousness. I would love to ask a question, but I know I can't see faces. So I'm just going to tell you, Lucy is a movie about tapping into higher levels of consciousness. And she actually takes a, you know, she, she takes a drug that enables her to get a higher levels of consciousness, which enables her to get more knowledge and be able to understand the world. I highly recommend watching this. This is the extreme of human potential, right? Limitless is another one. Why shouldn't we know about consciousness is because the world can be painted in a very dystopia manner. And what do I mean by dystopia? I mean where we're fighting for resources, where we're trying to find food and water, and we don't want that. And these are very extreme, bold, um, bold ways of me sharing this with you, but I really want you to put yourself out there when you're thinking about, well, why should I start to tap into my consciousness? What does it mean? So how do you do that? Okay, let's start with brain intelligence. I have about 10 minutes, yeah, brain intelligence. So you know the saying mind over matter. Now consciousness, currently everyone on this call, this is the most fascinating thing ever. We are using less than 5% of our conscious mind. Can you imagine that? We are using less than 5% of our conscious mind, which means we are running on 95% of subconscious programs. Really? What do I mean by that? I mean that your programs, there's nothing, so the subconscious mind can work in your favor. So for example, when you create a habit of waking up every morning and doing 50 squats, because you want your legs to be shaped, right? Let's say you create this habit, and every morning now you just do it because you've created a habit. Your subconscious is dragging you out of bed to do those 50 squats. You're not thinking about it anymore. That's why they say after a certain point, it's like a stamp. You remember and your subconscious works. Now, if you're building healthy habits, that's great. But do you know what's stored in this 95% of your subconscious mind? It's a lot that you absorbed as a child. And it's a lot that you absorbed in regard to trauma or great experiences. So your brain actually has programs. Everything that you do, when you're dealing with your family, with your teams, 
with, with yourself, the way you care for yourself, the way you give yourself credit, or maybe you're very hard on yourself, this all comes from patterns that are neuro neurologically imprinted in our, in our mind. And so when you know that you are running on less than 5% of your conscious mind, wouldn't you want to ask the question, well, how can I possibly tap into more of that? Because when you're creating from your conscious mind, you're awake now. You're awake, you're trying to register what I'm saying, you're conscious. But that's just 5% of you, or less than it. Much less than it. So, are you creating all these new business ideas or even your, your art or whatever it is that you, you create from a place that's new, a new field, or are you creating from programs from your past that are running on your subconscious mind? So I want to touch on what's going on right now. Everyone on this call currently has certain brainwave patterns in their head, and this is what I'm so passionate about, is the science and helping people I work with, the clients I work with, understand what is going on in their brain, in their body, so that they know how to help themselves. Right now, everyone on this call is running on what is known as beta waves. If you're very stressed, it's high beta. If you're more calm, it's lower beta. But this is your thinking mind. And as you calm down, you are actually physically and mentally more relaxed. You get calmer than that, which is theta, so you move from beta to alpha to theta, you are now more creative. This is science proving that people who can maintain lower levels of stress are more creative. They can actually tap into imagination and create some of the gr grandest ideas just by being able to lower these brainwave patterns. Delta is when you're asleep. And this is just the basic scenario. Now, if you're in high beta, what does this mean? If you're in high beta, it means that you're stressed. It means that your adrenaline and your cortisol, these are the hormones that are released in your body, are going to be in high doses. It means that all these happy hormones like endorphins, oxy, oxytocin, melatonin, they're actually the opposite. Now, do you know what this does to your body? This is extremely important to share with you right now because this has a lot to do with consciousness. If you're not relaxed and you're not tapping into your imagination, where are you creating from? But then also, if you are not relaxed, do you know that under high levels of beta, your actual body, your autonomic nervous system, your very immunity decreases? So there were studies that were done with people who practiced stillness or breath work, breathing, to slow their, their brain waves down, to calm their heart rate down. They did a study over four days where people were told to practice this breathing for 10 minutes a day for three, uh, three times a day. It increased their immunoglobulin count by 50%. Do you understand that you get an immune boost just by re relaxing yourself? And so during a time where the world is in fear, it's very important that we know this, besides the fact that it helps you create better ideas and make better decisions. So you can tap into better intuition and alpha and beyond. Now, that's a little bit about the brain, but I want to touch very quickly on the heart's intelligence. And the heart's intelligence is right now, if you are to slow your brainwave pattern down and you're to relax into, your, into yourself, and not be stressed by what is going on. Like we talked earlier, if you can pull yourself away and be an observer in your life, do you know that science has proven that you create a field around your body? We create, so you know this technology? Everyone's got their phone next to them, I'm sure. It sends information, right? Technology talks to each other. Do you know when Novel talked about this earlier, I love to see people so I know what they're feeling. We. Our heart, this organ that is actually an or it's 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 a, a muscle that's not been given much attention. It creates the strongest rhythmic field in your body. It actually sends more signals to the brain than the brain sends to it, four times more signals. So this field is an electromagnetic field 
that can reach up to three feet away from the body. Can you imagine that if you're scared, this field shrinks? It means that you are not, that's why when you get into a room and you see someone is upset, you can feel it. You know when you say, oh, I feel that that person is off. I feel like they're not happy. Why do you feel it? Because that person is sending information through the field. Isn't this fascinating? There, there is so much science behind it. And so if we recognize this, isn't it our responsibility to be very careful about how we are taking care of our internal system so that we're sending the right information to people who are living with us, as well as our teams and the businesses we run? And so the heart, obviously, if we're, if we're able to take care of our heart rate, we boost our immune system, we create a field of what is known a field of love. You're able to send more positive energy, energy that's better to the people around you and your surroundings. And you're able to boost your immunity. This is not a myth. It's proven. So when the world is running in fear, shouldn't we start trying to educate people on how they can internally self-regulate so that they can run their businesses, their lives, their homes better? So there's an institute called Heart Math Institute that I want you to all research after we're done so that you can get more details. But this is what it looks like when you're incoherent, meaning you're stressed out. Your patterns in your heart are highly fluctuating. But if you're in coherence, there's a nice flow movement. So when you have love or confidence or you're appreciating life, you're in better coherence. Now, this is what I want to share with you, which is really amazing, is that through years, decades of studies, they, the, there was a study conducted with entrepreneurs where they wanted to test or wanted to see pretty much what happened in regard to intu intuition. How are some leaders better at being intuitive? What did they do? They figured out that actually the heart can sense when something is going to happen, negative or positive, before the incident actually happens. So seven seconds before something good happens to you, your heart already knows it, but we've stopped listening to it. This is what they say about intuition. You know when you meet a business, new business partner, a new friend, and you don't, you don't feel it? We've stopped trusting our intuition. There, it is because our heart actually can sense this. They put someone in a room and they said, look at these pictures. And, and when you look at this picture, we're going to monitor your heart rate. We're going to monitor your brain scans. We're going to see what's happening to you. And what they found out was that people were able to, their heart reacted to a negative image much before the negative image was shown similarly with a positive image. And they did this with entrepreneurs and they found out that, the ones that actually started, you know, they realized that these entrepreneurs that make better decisions are the ones that actually tap into intuition. They trust their intuition. So my message is get into your heart a little bit. The brain thinks, but the heart knows. And I want to talk about how you can do this. I know that uh, we're, Novel, how much time do I have? And I can actually yeah. listen to you forever. <laughs> no, seriously, I mean, uh, please carry on for, okay. uh, you know, five, ten minutes or so. Please. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. So what I want to leave you, that's amazing. What I want to really tell you is the breath is something that is so important. You know, when, when I was living a fast-paced life, I used to laugh. When people told me to sit still, I used to say, I'm a hyperactive bunny. Like, I don't sit still. I only realized that when I had my panic attack. And I share this openly because I know people are scared of sharing their own stories. But it's very important for us to relate. The breath is something we were born with. It is the thing that keeps us alive, yet we've forgotten it. So the practice I want to tell you to do, just try it. If, if some of you don't have, do it, that's amazing. But if you wake up in the morning, even if you've got kids running around the house, and I'm going to tell you what I did with my best friend. I, I did this exercise with her, and the results were amazing. 
is wake up in the morning and sit in a quiet space. Close your eyes. Give yourself one minute and take a deep breath in. You count five seconds on the inhale and you count five seconds or more on the exhale. It's fine if you want to go more. So it would look like it would be like this. You go. And this might sound a little bit, you know, really, do I need to do this? How is this really going to help me? Everything I just shared with you about your brain and about your heart, you can regulate your own immune system. You can regulate the health in your body. You can decrease stress hormones. You can start creating a field that is more positive and more filled with love. You can be more creative. You can make better decisions. Maybe that's why you should try the breath. Just like you get up and do 50 squats or you want to go for a jog in the evening to build your, your muscles, which is so important too. Take care of your body. What are you doing to build your inner world? What are you doing? So the breath, a simple exercise, we run on 15 to 16 breaths a minute and we don't even notice it. We're just running through our day. If we slow down, and do the exercise that I told you, you're actually going to take five breaths a minute. So five, five, count five in, five out. You're slowing everything down. You're now tapping into higher consciousness within yourself. You will see the results after a series of days of doing this. So I call it conscious breathing. And what does it do for you? Plenty. It starts your journey of living in the now. We are always living in the past, either past trauma, we had a fight, the business is falling apart, I don't know what, we're, we're stuck in the past, or we're living in the future. Oh my God, what am I going to do tomorrow? I have a meeting, I have a presentation. We're not now. We're not nowist. You know the futurist? Become the nowist. <laughs> Become the nowist. More peace, less stress, and the bonus is you get a bulletproof immune system. This is not a joke. Please research it. Read on it. Read on it. It doesn't have to just come from me. This is just a starting point. Health is wealth, especially now. So you want to take care of your immunity. And you want to get beyond your analytic mind. You want to make better decisions. You want to create deeper relationships. So the benefits of conscious breathing are mental and emotional states directly affect what is known as our autonomic nervous system. And this autonomic nervous system within us maintains our digestive system, our cardiovascular system, immunity, hormonal system, our bodily systems, our internal functions, our heart rate. It controls our respiration. We need that now, don't you think? <laughs> I think we do. We need to be able to regulate this for ourselves. So I did an exercise with my best friend when I went to her. She has two kids, a dog, a tortoise. Her mother lives with her. She's super busy. She has a leadership role in a very senior position, very hectic life. So I sat with her. I said, you know what? I used to be you. I know the space you're in. I have been in this, I've been exploring the science, all the science related to this because data is so important to our analytic minds for us to be able to understand what is going on within us. So this device is called uh, inner balance device. And I purchased it because I wanted to understand what was really happening to me if I was to slow down. And was it really regulating my heart rate? Was it helping my immunity? So I sat with my friend and I told her, give me, give me five minutes of your time back to back, so make that 10. I want to measure your heart coherence with this device through breathing. And I want to see how you're doing. Now, what is the, the, cohe the coherence tells you whether you're, in a nutshell, and I don't want to get into details because this is very intense, it tells you in a nutshell how you're feeling on the inside. Are you happier? Are you self-regulating? So anything, you know, from three upwards is better than anything that bet below three. And so my friend put on this device and she sat there and she breathed it in for five minutes. And her scores were decent for the first time. I didn't tell her to do anything. But then I switched it up and I said, for the next five minutes, I want you to imagine, I want you to imagine, use your imagination about a perfect day for you. Do you know her scores went up by two points? 
the minute she switched her mind into more positive, more, uh, more imaginative thoughts about a better, brighter future she wants to create for herself, her body automatically started to self-regulate better. And this is what I, I get into with my clients. I'm actually um, working with a company, amazing people who are doing great work in Boulder, Colorado. Um, called Mindful Science, and they are running experiments, and we're trying to find out how to improve coherence scores. So this is something that I also will talk about with people who choose to continue the work or are curious about this more. But on this screen is just the app interface that would show you what's going on in your body. So my point about this is that there's data now. If, you're, if, if people are thinking that this is fluff or that this talk about being able to self-regulate through the breath is just mumbo-jumbo. There's a lot of data. There's a lot of science. There's so much happening in this space. That's why I see it so important, especially in the world of exponential technologies and people in the space of high-paced lives. So when you practice nowness and conscious role-playing for better scenarios, you self-regulate and you create. And experience outweighs theories. You can hear me all day, but unless you're practicing it for yourself, it wouldn't matter. So I want to just, I think I'm going to, there's so much more I want to share, but I, I think we're, I'll give it another three minutes and I'll touch a little bit about purpose. How do you experience this? You need to learn how to be gr grounded within yourself through this exercise of conscious breathing. You need to find a way to be resilient in your truth. And what, I, what do I mean by tr your truth? I mean discovering your purpose. What really makes you tick? What's going to make you feel more at peace, more fulfilled? Like you're doing something you really want to do because the great work only comes if you are truly aligned with that and taking aligned action. So once you discover this action, you see resilience, it then becomes inevitable. You do it because you're so passionate. But you know that feeling when you're feeling, oh, I don't really want to, no, I'm not feeling this? You're not aligned. Ask yourself why. Start asking yourself questions and lead by harmonizing your heart and brain. You see, we need to extend compassion to our own human body before we can go save the world. There is a ton of um, things happening right now where people are trying to build businesses, gain competitive advantage, trying to take, make this an opportunistic marketplace. But are you, really, are you really going within to align with yourself so that you're creating businesses that reside with your purpose, your alignment? And you need to make up your mind. You need to make up your mind that you matter. People have forgotten. You know, when you go into a flight and they tell you, can you put on your oxygen mask for yourself before you're a child? People have forgotten to do this. And this is why we, we go through a very difficult times in our life. So just to touch on purpose before I close, um, even though there was more I wanted to share, but we went with the flow here. Um, there are blue zones on this planet. Blue zones are where people live the longest. They have the most number of centurions, and they discovered it's because people live in their purpose and their truth. And what do I mean by purpose? You can read up more about this after the call. It's the simple things. Purpose is really the simple things that bring you peace. They bring you joy. They bring you fulfillment. You can then start to sculpt what the bigger picture is just by trying to follow the things that bring you more joy in your life. What do I mean? Okay, so today, you know, I may be a, a, a leader of a multi-billion dollar business, but today I feel like I'm going to take a little time and I'm going to paint. I had a dear friend of mine in the leadership team of the previous company I worked in, and every time he took out his pa paper and pen and painted or drew, you could tell that he felt liberated and he would go back in with just a little bit more energy to the board meetings. Are you doing things that bring you this peace and joy? Or are you completely killing yourself off that, off that flow? Purpose is in the simple things so that you can define the bigger purpose. Ikigai is the model that I teach on with the clients I work with. 
And you can look this up as well and read up more about it. There's a book on it. There are four main questions that it taps into. What do you love? What does the world need based on what you love? So how can you give back from a place of love? What can you get paid for? And what are you good at? And once you start exploring the space, you'll then start connecting. But it's work. And you need to commit to the work of discovering why you are here so that you can actually contribute to the betterment of mankind. So I'll close with this, even though I'd love to share more. Um, don't ask what the world needs from you. Ask what makes you come alive. Because what the world needs is for more people to come alive, especially during this time. So do we have any questions in this group? Yes, I'll I'm going to clap for you uh, first, Anne. Fantastic, <laughs> fantastic. I enjoy it thoroughly. As a matter of fact, um, we have one question, uh, one person raising, sorry, one person raising hands. Lillian Chia. Lillian, I'm going to allow you to, to talk. Hi. Hi, Lillian. Hi, hi, Anne. I'm just wondering, um, what do you think about, um, um, do you prefer, um, how to say, stillness or you prefer positive minds? No. I mean, I, what, which yeah. will you choose as in like in times like you face any, um, any situation? Yeah. Uh, That's a think? great question. That's a great question. And I cover it in my, um, in my uh, workshops as well is that it is not about positivity. Positivity is an output of you being able to regulate your emotions. And so stillness is a better word. Breath work is another word. Um, meditation, there's so many different words that people use. I like stillness because it simplifies it. Positivity has been exaggerated over the past decade and there's been too much content that's been put out where people have had to fake positivity even if they're not happy. And so I, I say the first step of how I work with my clients, and I'm glad you mentioned this, is to rage and to reflect. Why do I use the word rage? Is because a lot of people have pent up anger that they don't deal with. They just don't deal with. And they actually end up um, harnessing these emotions into either conditions of uh, disease, uh, you know, chronic conditions, or stress, or anxiety, and you can see it in them, or the way they take decisions are very sporadical. It is very unhealthy to put aside, I call it shoving under the carpet. So if you're feeling a negative emotion, you need to move through it. You need to address it. You need to find out why you're feeling that way. Sadness, anger, guilt, depression. And it's fine to feel that. In fact, that is our human, that, that is our human capacity. We have to feel all emotions. So I believe that as you move through the emotion, you will come out the other end to being more positive. Mm -hmm. does, that, does that answer your... Okay. Yeah, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, thank you, Lillian. We've got um, yeah. Sue Eng Tan. Hi, hi everyone. Hello. Hi, Sue. Yeah. Okay, I, I think uh, there's a lot of uh, things for me to do homework from what I'm learning from all of you. Uh, <laughs> and I, I think it, it, it resonates and it, it reminds us of the inner capability. And I like the word about collective consciousness. You see, all of us are able to be aligned to the same purpose. Uh, same way of creating harmony and around us. I think the world by itself uh, will reach a very coherent state. Absolutely. So, so I do hope that, you know, I, I will take your the seeds that you sow for me to learn. I don't have anything specific to ask now because I, I believe I'm still learning a lot of things. But there are so many things that like coming together from recent events uh, and thing of experience we are going into and I think we, we will follow you from there. You know? Same with Nobel for orchestrating this. Yeah. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you, you. So, thank you so much. Before I continue with uh, the next question, uh, let me remind you that uh, if you can please fill in the uh, feedback survey, I just put the link on the chat. Please, if you can just do this uh, quick uh, feedback survey, we would like to hear from you. Your comment is really so, appreciated. Uh, Novel. Yes, sir. There was a slide that you're flashing through. Uh, I was just seeing that you had inclusions and all those various things. Uh, yeah. Is it all okay for us to have a look at that page, please? Wh which one, dear? Uh, I think there was one where you flash which shows like inclusion. There are a lot of boxes. Yes, there's, there's, uh, yes, I think it's this one. <laughs> yeah. This is one of my favorites, yeah. but it's also a very deep topic. So I, <laughs> I skipped it because we're out of time. <laughs> but yes, yes. Thank you for sharing that. Yes, I thank, yes. Go ahead. I think he, he just want to see the, uh, the yes work. so this is a this this was a very important point but it's a hefty one in the sense that I wanted to address the topic of not business for good but communities for good we're creating communities mm -hmm. and um, those of you who are aware of Burning Man Burning Man is a festival that happens it's really you know a playground for innovation and where people go and they create technology and you know they build these beautiful art pieces out in the middle of Nevada in the desert look it up it's 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 beautiful and what they they um, their principles are I believe are very important principles for the way we create new communities for a better world of tomorrow and these are the principles from Burning Man which says radical inclusion decommodification uh, communal effort, people work together, radical self-expression, you're free to express yourself, you gift people more, so there's kindness and love, um, there's self-reliance, so you're able to self-regulate, you're able to rely on yourselves, there's a responsibility for the community, civic responsibility, you leave no trace, so the environment's a very big thing, and immediacy and participation. All right, thank you, Anne. So, uh... Again, once again, everyone, please uh, fill in the feedback survey quickly. Now, we have a question from Reem Al, Al Halyan. Hello, Reem. Hey. <laughs> Hi, Reem. Reem designed my beautiful logo that's actually sitting here, which says okay, Lead with Love. She the, is, uh, she's a art. business owner, and she, uh, in, and she is one who left the corporate world to be an artist, and I'm extremely proud of her journey. My goodness. <laughs> it's, you know, I just keep staring at the logo throughout the <laughs> It's logo. gorgeous, yes. I love it. It's like, you know, <laughs> fantastic. So Rim was saying, I'm anxious about the future. And during the last three months, it became easier to step back from the work and live in the comfort zone of non-productivity. Now, I don't know how to get back to it. I don't <laughs> feel creative or inspired. How would you advise That's me to move forward? What are some That's, steps I can take to move to move forward? Thank you. Wow, such a profound question there. I love That's it. a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful question. Um, I think that the human spirit has been shaken over this time because there's so much that we're seeing in the news and there's so much that's going on in the world, in all our countries, really. And some of us have experienced uh, trauma within our own families with what has ha happened in our own lives. So I think the dampening of the spirit has actually caused people to feel like they're, you know, they're trying to surface from, from being underwater. And so I would say some of the practices I use when I want to get back into creativity are stillness. I sit in that space, I get into a space of imagination, and I set actually intentions every day. So what is my intention for today? And I work around that. So for example, there was a day, and I kid you not, I, I had no idea what to do with my day. And I'm living alone. And I said, I was a little bit frustrated. I had a, a day where I was frustrated and angry. And I sat in stillness for about 10 minutes. And I got out of that, and I just felt like drawing. So I drew on my wall. I drew, an, a, a, this entire wall is com 
covered in, in art. And that came just from me sitting down and saying, I need to release this in some way, so I'm going to do whatever and not judge myself. So stillness is a practice that works for me. Intentions is a practice that works for me. And also being kind to yourself, Reem, because you can't always be productive. So coming back into the space of productivity is getting more accustomed with you being. And what do I mean by being? If you don't feel like you are in the mood to create a piece of art because that is your business, then don't do it. Write. Write about this feeling of, of feeling stuck. Get it out of your system. So there are times I sit and I journal. I journal a lot and you actually make journals. So journaling can help in inspiring you back into creativity. But when you're talking about productivity, productivity, I put placeholders in my calendar. So let's say I want in this week, in this week to get something done and I take only three things. I do not overwhelm myself because what the human productivity system tends to do is we've got to overdo it, especially in lockdown. You know, people who are not in their offices and they're working from home, they feel this sense of, okay, am I doing enough? Should I be doing more? Or their bosses feel, the people that they're working with feel like, are they doing enough? So they keep bothering them to do more. Yeah. So if you're trying to manage your time, I would say put placeholders in your calendar. All right, so I'm going to try and get these three things done in the week. What I do is I put something on a Sunday, I put something on a Tuesday, and I put something on a Saturday. That way when it pops up on my phone as a little reminder, I'm not, I, I realize, oh, you know, I should have probably given this a little bit of attention. So from a productivity perspective, putting placeholders in your calendar and also being kind with yourself. So smart goals. Don't set something, you know, if you're writing a book, you don't want to say, I want to finish five chapters. In one day, you'll say, I'll finish half a chapter. I'll get through writing a few pages. You, you know yourself. You know how you're feeling. Go inside. Ask yourself the question. But placeholders in a calendar and little notifications that pop on your phone help keep you on track. Well, that's really I hope that helped. Um, well, I was listening to you. I think that was very powerful because sometimes we put... Uh, you know, we, we are being hard on ourselves. We are actually, we are expecting a lot from ourselves. And we always feel that we, we haven't done enough, right? In a yeah. day or in, in a week and stuff. So uh, for those who are actually working in a corporate life, you're lucky actually if your boss is telling you, okay, just do three things in a week. <laughs> so most of it, you know, most, most of the time they're gonna expect you to do 300 things, uh, you know, in a week, right? So that's really something that will burn you out. Now, uh, and I have one question from, my, uh, you know, you, you talk about intuition. You talk how actually heart uh, will give us signal like seven seconds before something bad or uh, good happens to you. Now, my question is, uh, do you have any tips how we can actually uh, do some exercise in trusting our intu intuition? Yeah, definitely. I think the first thing is whenever you're faced with a question mm -hmm. or a dilemma. Um, the Heart Math Institute actually that has done over three decades of research in this space um, are pioneering on this front and there are several scientists actually um, that are pi pioneering now more than ever on this front is right. to be able to, um, and I go back to stillness, but stillness is also linked with us what we're doing in regard to our consciousness our awareness in that moment so you could sit still but your mind is still busy right so how do you still your mind and this is why they say when you're you're breathing you take you focus on the breath like it's an elevator that's going up and down your system now to answer your heart, uh, your question about intuition of the heart when you're actually sitting in this stillness i want you to try when you close your eyes, so you're faced with a dilemma, you leave the meeting, you know, you get off the call, you sit down and you take your awareness, literally, when you, you, you take your awareness, your consciousness, lower it from your brain to your heart. So 
It's literally you're taking energy by just moving your awareness into your heart. You're shifting where you're placing your attention. You're giving your heart the acknowledgement it deserves. You're saying, okay, you know what? I'm going to try and listen to you. And I'm going to try and see how this feels. So when you're taking those breaths and you move your awareness from your brain into your heart, you then sit and ask the question. After sitting in stillness for at least, at least five minutes, because you then regulate your system, you ask the question, say, what would I do in this situation? Remember how we talked about the observer, right? Now you're sitting within your heart. You ask, ask your heart. It sounds crazy. But you know how when they say that um, when you're at a crossroads and you actually have this pull in going in a certain direction, but sometimes taking that direction requires more courage. So what does your mind tell you? It says, ah, no, no, this route's easier. Go down that way. But there's this pull saying that this is a better this is a better decision, but it needs a little bit of courage. That's what your heart, that's your heart talking to you. But you need to still yourself to listen to it. So when you still yourself, you give yourself that five minutes, you sit into your heart and you say, what would I do? What would I really do in this situation? And do not, do not go back into the monkey mind. Stay in the situation, stay in the space of asking your heart because your heart has the answer much before your brain. So the minute you start rationalizing it is the minute you realize that you're going back into the rational, practical mind, not what you really want to do. Now for uh, some announcement for next week uh, webinar, we're going to have Mr. Ghanim al Falasi, uh, Senior Vice President of People Happiness. Here we're going to talk about happiness and <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> but uh, in specific, uh, he's going to talk about uh, one of his patients because he's in charge of uh, the people. They used to call it uh, HR, and in his uh, organization, uh, they they called it. They started calling it People Happiness uh, Department, which is quite interesting, right? So he's going to talk about how to 10x the human resources function and basically we're going to talk about the future of human resources in particular in uh, you know uh, in the relation with what's happening with the COVID-19 so he's actually taking an analogy of BC to AC now in, in this sense uh, the, the acronym of BC uh, is uh, before COVID to AC after COVID, after COVID right so if you're into human uh, resources or people happiness please come and join us next week so it's going to be happening on saturday july the 4th from uh, 5 p.m dubai time and also this weekend friday i'm so excited because uh, we have people actually participating to create the future of work for the middle east and i'm very happy to announce that Anne is also going to be one of our mentors for you know uh, this uh, challenge and at the same time also, uh, we are doing this challenge in different countries. Uh, we are actually doing it in more than 20 countries across the globe in different dates. Uh, also, we're going to launch this 10X Sprint very soon, which is the 10 week uh, online immersive and experiential journey for anyone who would like to, uh, to become a disruptive innovator or entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs uh, entrepreneurs so you're going to be learning about the uh, different uh, innovation methodologies and combining them with the uh, emerging technologies and come up with the uh, disruptive innovation ideas so and uh, i would like to ask you if you have uh, a final or uh, closing closing remark before we end this uh, webinar yeah my wish is that everyone dig into the space more and really tap into your potential because it's not just about stillness, it's not just about positivity. When you get into the space and you understand consciousness, you can create the reality you want. Fantastic. So thank you very much everyone for tuning in and sharing you know, the conversations with us. And special thanks of course to our awesome storyteller today. And both hello everyone, I'm gonna give you 
you know, a lot of us. <laughs> Thank if I you so much. Standing up, I'll face it, I'll do that. <laughs> Thank you so much, and for your time and for sharing your valuable insights and thoughts. I really appreciate it. So, everyone, if you want to get in touch with Anne, uh, you can reach out to, to, to her at hello at annebutello.com or you can visit yes. the, her website annebutello.com right? so everyone please stay safe and healthy and see you in our next webinars thank you for having me noble thank you everyone <laughs> thank you Anne. so bye for now bye bye